Welcome back to the New Space Vision podcast sponsored by Liveio. In this episode, we were joined by Matthias Wachter from the BDI. Matthias is the founder of the New Space Initiative and had so much to share about his perspective of the ecosystem. In this episode, you will hear about what lobby groups like the BDI are and how they operate, what the state of new space in Germany and Europe is and what needs to improve, and why space technology is important for European sovereignty in the 21st century. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to the New Space Vision podcast sponsored by LiveU, where we discuss new space technology, finance and innovation with executives, founders and more exciting people from the startup and new space ecosystem. I'm Sam Shivara. And I'm Danny Seidel. And together we are the founders of the Earth Observation Company LiveU and New Space Vision. Today we are very excited to welcome Matthias Wachter from the BDI. The BDI is basically the leading representative of the entire German industry and currently represents over 100,000 companies. Matthias is not only the head of Department of International Cooperation, Security Policy, Raw Materials in Space, but also the Managing Director of the New Space Initiative at the BDI. Welcome, Matthias. So basically, how did you end up at the BDI? First of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'm super excited being on your, on your podcast. It's a great honor for me. Um, how did I end up at the BDI? Honestly, um, it, it, it was no plan. Yeah, it, uh, it just happened uh, because um, I used to work for um, Axel Springer Publishing Company here in Berlin. And uh, a couple of years ago, the uh, new CEO of the BDI was looking for a personal assistant. And um, uh, he asked um, uh, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung uh, if there would be a, a former, former student who uh, would fit into his profile. And um, somehow I popped up, yeah. And, um, and then I got a call. And um, yeah, two weeks later, I started uh, at the BDI. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was not, uh, not, not a plan at the beginning. Uh, um, uh, but um, I'm there now for a couple of years and I'm still very happy, still very excited. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So with a couple of years, you mean basically 14 years roundabout, right? So 10, uh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Nice. So it was That's quite a long time. I know. I know. And it was a very challenging environment back then, right? 20, uh, 2008, uh, after the crisis. I mean, yeah, there, there was the financial crisis. So I started BDI, then the financial crisis started. And, and, and from, 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 from then on, there were all the time new challenges. First of all, uh, the financial crisis, then the pandemic, then the war, uh, the Russian war uh, against Ukraine. Um, so it, it really kept us uh, busy. And um, I think that's um, uh, th that what I really like about uh, my, my, my job is that it's so um, diverse that we always have new new topics and things coming up. And um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still very excited about what I'm doing. So you started as the executive assistant to the CEO. Um, and now I think you're one of the most prominent faces of space and new space in Germany. How did that come to be? <laughs> um, very, very, very good question. Um, as you mentioned, I'm, my department is also responsible for raw materials. And a couple of years ago, we, um, we organized our huge uh, raw materials conference. And at that time, uh, raw materials were not really sexy. Yeah, so the, uh, the, 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 the prices were very low and there was really no issue in, uh, for the companies in, in getting the, the, the raw materials they needed. Uh, so it was not on the political and on the me media agenda. So we thought we, we, we need to spice it up a bit. And uh, we thought about what about space mining? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's include space mining into the raw materials conference. And, and everyone was like making fun of us and laughing and <laughs> space mining, that's, you can't be serious. And we did it. And it skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the media coverage was amazing. Yeah? yeah, we never had a similar media coverage for a BDI event. Yeah, and from that time on, from that point on, we thought, wow, uh, we got so many requests by journalists, by politicians. Uh, that's really a super exciting issue. And then we started this um, new space breakfast series uh, together with uh, Thomas Jatzombek, the former Air and Space Coordinator. And then it 
it went bigger and bigger yeah and uh, again it wasn't it wasn't planned uh, in advance and we never we never ever expected that um, that it would yeah balloon in in, in, in this kind uh, uh, of way and and so uh, from from that time on we increased our space activities and we we still do that and uh, the, uh, the the feedback and the coverage and and the issues are really phenomenal yeah so this that i can definitely say as well i think space always sparks the imagination and it's, it's a great hook to start a conversation um so what's your role within bdi so so what's in and especially in connection with the new space ecosystem what do you do um so after the um the the, the the raw materials conference with the uh, space mining topic uh, we started the new uh, space breakfast format and then our goal from that um, point on was we need to bring together space and new space companies on the one side with our traditional member base in the non-space industry yeah like you you you, you mentioned it, uh, at the beginning bdi is representing roughly 100,000 manufacturing companies and a lot of these companies already use space generated data and services etc and, and 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 our mission at the beginning was let's try to bring these two worlds together and uh, what 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 i did is um, what i tried to do was setting up uh, events formats of, of bringing these two worlds together that's pretty much uh, uh, what we how, how we started and and, and 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 what i did and it's um, um it, it's pretty much still what we are doing today yeah uh, and uh, the, the 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 newest highlight was at the end of last year when we um, uh, set up this uh, german new space initiative which has now more than than 60 members uh, or to to even increase the activities in this regard, and uh, and I have the opportunity to, yeah, to to lead the new space initiative, which is a great privilege. Yeah, yeah, super exciting. We will dive deeper into into these topics uh, today. Uh, but Sven and I, uh, I mean, we have new space vision also to bring people from outside the ecosystem into the ecosystem, right? So there is a big overlap from a different angle, of course. Um, before we dive deeper into these uh, uh, these questions, so um, are you also a, a, a science fiction fan or or something like this, or is space was space always uh, on, on 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 a goal for you that, to work there, or was it completely different? Um, I am a huge science fiction fan. Uh, and uh, I, I always was, um, but I never had, let's say, the plan or the idea to, to, to work in this field. Yeah, so it was always um, kind of a hobby. And I, and I really, I, I, I read a lot uh, starting at school. And uh, yeah, so now pretty much a dream comes true. Uh, what, what I always, uh, uh, what I was always interested in and uh, what, what I, uh, I really uh, loved about science fiction and, and, and uh, innovation, new technologies. I'm, I'm now able to work in this field, and uh, that's great. Yeah. And most important thing is you're not a space engineer, so also non-space engineers can work. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek, if you had to decide? Of course, it's Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a count. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the Enterprise on my, on my shirt. I saw that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, let's talk a bit uh, about um, uh, basically your, your daily job, right? Um, so, uh, first of all, um, of course, the BDI is an organization which is... Uh, lobbying right so um, people very often have um, uh, neg negative associations with uh, lobbyism um, what would you tell them basically to con convince them that it's super important for the society uh, what uh, um, um, lobbying organizations such as BDI is doing this really somebody's thinking <laughs> negative about us I, I, I cannot imagine yeah that's that's something totally new I'm, I'm hearing that for the first time um, no jokes aside um, um, so what what we are pretty much what we do is we um, represent the interests of our members, and the, the the members are part of the BDI on a on a voluntary base, and everything what we do, all the positions, for example, we um, we um, address towards the uh, the government or politicians or the public in general, are um, are made in a very 
um, democratic way and procedure. Yeah, so we have committees. Uh, within these committees, uh, there are company and association representatives and these committees they elect their head and their speaker and uh, within these committees we develop our positions and at the end of the day we um, we have a vote on uh, on uh, which position we will we will take in which direction we are going to move etc yeah so um, I would say we have a, a, a strong democratic legitimacy and uh, we are, um, yeah, the, the, the entire structure of, uh, of the BDI and how we work is extremely democratic, yeah? So there is no, no let's say, one figure on top who says, yeah, that's, that's the position we should, mm -hmm. uh, we should push forward. And it's, a, it, uh, it's not a top-down approach, it's a bottom-up approach, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and I think we, we play an important role in the, uh, political overall process because we bring into the political debate the democratic developed positions of our companies and of our of, of our membership and i think we do that uh, like other ngos and like other participants in the political process and i think that's that's important yeah that um, all voices are heard and when the government and politicians are uh, making decisions uh, that they have recognized different points of view and uh, they, they, they take that into account. And that's what, what we pretty much do. Yeah, and Sven and I can confirm this, right? We were part of the process and we could also always see small and big players uh, like participating there. And we were very small back then and you, you still listened to our voice, which was uh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. And so you already mentioned the new space initiative of the BDI and uh, we at Life, you are also members of that. Mm -hmm. And we know who else is member uh, of the BDI uh, new space initiative. But maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you are doing there in a little bit more detail. What kind of companies are, for example, part of this initiative and what are the outputs which you are creating to form the maybe political opinion around this topic? Mm -hmm. um, OK, so we we founded the initiative uh, at the end of last year and we started with 27 companies and associations and that the, the goal was um we 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 we've been now active for a couple of years uh in uh, in space policy in the uh, in the space segment we had different events big events the the, the big space conference um, we have the, the, the new space breakfast, etc. And now we reached a point where um, some, some more structure was needed because the thing grew so big that it became kind of difficult to handle. Yeah, because um, um, my department and, and me at the BDI, it still pretty much was a, was a hobby. Yeah. Uh, we had the, the raw materials issues, the security policy issues, the defense issues, uh, uh, international corporations. I'm, I'm traveling very, very often to Africa because that's also part of, uh, of my, 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 my job. And, and space always came on top. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, so again, it, it became so big and the interests became so big that we thought we need to structure it a bit more. We need to formalize it more. And then we had the idea to 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 found a new um, let's say organization under the umbrella of BDI, which is highly independent, but also benefits from let's say the brand and the power, if you want, of the the the, the, the BDI brand. And uh, so th th that's pretty much the story how we. Um, founded the new space in initiative at, at the end of last year and uh, out of these 27 founding members about two-thirds of the companies were new space startups mm -hmm. like you like life eu and the other third are uh, pretty much uh, non-space companies like munich re like deutsche bahn you know very well like uh, kali und salz germany's biggest uh, raw materials uh, company um, companies like ExxonMobil or SAP, the uh, well-known tech and software company, 
Um, so two thirds new space startups, uh, uh, one third uh, 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 traditional non-space companies um, who are already working together with space companies or who use space-based data and applications. And uh, now, uh, uh, after after one year, we, are, we we already have more than sixty members. Um, we. And now have our first full-time employee, Ramona Schmidt. Since two weeks, yes, three weeks, something exactly, like this. yeah. And uh, and and, and uh, I think she she won't be the last employee because again it's getting bigger and bigger, and um, yeah. So that is that that is the, that is the story, and I think uh, that the fact that we got invited by uh, by the German government to participate in the in the new. Uh, a space uh, strategy uh, which will come up next year uh, that we get frequent uh, invitations by the government by the parliament uh, to to get heard as uh, as uh, as experts about what we what what we think um, that th that makes us very proud and we are especially proud that uh, during the last um, six months or the first six months of this year together with all uh, member companies of the New Space Initiative, we developed uh, our own 32-page long position paper, New Space Made in Germany, yeah. uh, uh, calling for more ambitions, uh, calling for uh, for more excitement and, and for a, um, a bigger role for space. That's the... Uh, that's the, the, the goal of the, the paper. And together with all the companies, we, uh, we developed very deep and, 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 and qualified and concrete proposals uh, what the government, what ESA, what the European Union should do to strengthen the new space ecosystem in Germany and Europe. And I would assume that asteroid mining is not uh, one of the top agendas here. Is it? So uh, how, <laughs> can, can you tell us a bit what are the, the what, what is the focus right now? What are the biggest topics? Um, um, we we within the process for for uh, writing the paper, we had um, four working groups. We have one working group which dealt with the legal framework. We had uh, the, the second um, working group which focused on um, uh, connectivity. Um, uh, industry 4.0 uh, and, and, and cyber security issues. Um, uh, working group number three um, uh, made recommendations when it uh, comes to uh, mobility and, and, and the automotive sector. And the uh, working group number four um, uh, uh, dealt with uh, sustainability and agriculture and how space can be used um, yeah, to make uh, living on our planet uh, more more sustainable. Yeah, and yeah. And, and, and and this were four working groups. That that's also pretty much the four main topics uh, with uh, within our paper. And uh, uh, these are the basis for uh, for our recommendations. Yeah. So already here, a big invitation to every company to definitely have a look at the uh, in Germany to have a look at the BDI New Space Initiative. Uh, it's a very interesting format and, and it's a great area to to collaborate. We can say as members ourselves. Definitely. So um, so Checkmark, you bring companies uh, outside of new space into new space, right, with the in initiative. Um, but the second ambition is, of course, to to change also the, the, the government, uh, the, the government to its perception of the new space industry. Right. Um, did you accomplish uh, um, things there or do you see a change in the perception? How was it in the beginning when you talked about uh, space with the government? Um, I, I think that's more 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 of a marathon and, and, and not a sprint. Uh, um, my, my impression is that there is, a, um, let's say, an openness when it comes to new approaches. Um, but when it comes to implementation and really new ways of policies, uh, it's getting complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what, what we would like to see as new space initiative is pretty much a system change of of how we are doing space in Germany and in Europe. Yeah, uh, we um, we think that the American model, which is um, 
which focuses more on private enterprises and um, is doing or is letting private companies um, doing the, uh, the space implementation and the implementation of projects uh, in a competitive way is at the end of the day more um, successful and more innovative than the, let's say, top-down approach where government everything regulates and specifies um, that we have in Germany and in Europe at the moment. So what we would like to see is more competition, fair competition, where companies, regardless of their size and their, um, their, their, their history, uh, uh, have equal access to all programs. And um, uh, we would also uh, would like to see that the, the government and the, the German and European Space Agency and the European Union is doing less programs uh, on their own and instead uh, defining, let's say, more goals, what they want to achieve, and then start a competition and then let companies uh, do it and implement it. So we want to see more contracts, we call it anchor, customer principle, um, and, uh, and, 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 and less the bureaucratic and very static way of how space is unfortunately still done in, in Europe and Germany. Yeah. Um, so we've seen one very prominent example or one good example. I don't know whether it was prominent in the general public, but I at least know of it, which is exactly the example of the competition in regards to um, building a small set launcher where we have now uh, several more than 100 million euros in public funding, which support the, the governmental um, funding, which uh, fl uh, fl uh, has flown in that area. Would you say that currently um, the, the German government um, sees the importance of space to the extent necessary? Honestly, um, I think more needs to be done. And uh, it, um, I think the, the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine somehow changed the perception. Uh, now everyone realizes and sees every day how Im important space has become, how important space is, how important technologies like uh, connectivity from space, the example is Starlink, uh, are, and uh, that, th that space has a strategic dimension, but also um, uh, um, uh, an, an industry-wide dimension. And uh, th this goes far beyond the, the, the pure space sector, yeah? So I think there's uh, the, a uh, change going on, how space is perceived, but I think it's not going fast enough and it's not going far enough. And uh, so what we are going to do is, or what we will do as New Space Initiative is we will continue to address that. Uh, we, we, I think we need more ambitions. We need more ambitions on the government side and we need to be bolder. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think that the, the, the government um, still has um, a way to go. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think this is especially interesting because Germany has been during the uh, early phase of the war been one of the countries which has been really struck by the effect of uh, of a hacking attack which had uh, a connection to space. So for everyone who, who is not aware of this, during the the first couple of weeks of that war. Um, um, a satellite system had been hacked, a US American satellite communication system, which also provided uh, communication to, to, to Ukraine. Uh, but this telecommunication system also provided connectivity to uh, wind power plants here in Germany, which then we are not able to operate. So, um, yeah, we really see the, the vulnerability of these, these assets. Yeah, what I would be interested in, uh, um, do you also see a potential in changing the mechanics of how the government can support the industry? Because from my understanding, um, it's mainly about the ESA budget. So how much money goes uh, into the ESA budget? But that's mainly, um, uh, that's a lot of um, support, uh, funding, like more like a public funding support for companies. Um, 
do you see that this is the way to go or also do you see alternatives there? Like I think we need two things. Uh, number one, and that's something you always uh, need and hear, um, I think we need to invest more. Yeah. So if you compare the size of Germany and the amount of money which Germany and the government invests in space, that's almost nothing. Yeah. And if you take into account how important space already is for the non-space sector and especially for the German manufacturing sector, which is the backbone of our economy, um, it's, it's further striking that we don't invest enough. So we need to invest more. That's number one. And number two is we need to invest the money more wisely. Yeah, uh, we, um, we, we still have uh, very uncompetitive uh, uh, structures. Uh, we still have a lot of top-down projects um, organized and orchestrated by the government and the, 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 the ESA, which run for years. So a lot of money is, uh, let's say, poured in for years and is not available for new projects and new innovative approaches. And I think we, um, we need to change that. And I think that can be done uh, uh, within the, uh, the existing structures. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you look at the, the, the US and, and what, what NASA has done, yeah, so that Ma NASA transformed itself pretty much from an, 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 an technical organization which built its own rockets to an organization which now primarily acts as a customer, uh, then you can see that tr a transformation like this is possible. And, 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 and I think that could also and should also be possible in Germany and uh, on the European level. Yeah, one, one thing also which makes Sven and me think is uh, LiveView now um, is monitoring uh, critical infrastructure mm -hmm. across the globe. We have more than 100 customers, not even one from the German government. So that is somehow weird, right? Because we have really valuable technology, but there's like they not, not even contact us to get some inspiration of what we could do. Right? Absolutely, so it's really, absolutely. Really interesting. Yeah, the, 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 the government is, 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 is not really using the opportunity. Yeah, uh, exactly. uh, private companies and, and startups, and, and I would say it, it's not only startups, yeah, it's uh, regardless the size and, 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 and the heritage of companies. Um, uh, it can also be bigger companies, but the government in general is not taking advantage of that. And I would go, go, go even further. We have uh, many examples where the government and government institutes even compete with private yeah. companies and the startups. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. taxpayer money is not only uh, not spent uh, uh, in, 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 in the right regard, but it, it is also spent in a way that it it, uh, it it competes with private investors and thus makes the, um, the the ecosystem less attractive for private investors. Because if you compete with the government and if you compete with DLR institutes, uh, uh, that's uh, that, that's a hard sell. Especially if the institutes and this is also very often the case, offer their services for free. Yeah. And, and, and that's something we, um, we really need to address and we need to talk about. Yeah. So uh, how I see it um, in, 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 in Europe or in Germany, it's, it's really the, the government creates more friction through this competition. Whereas in the US, they, they are boosting the private um, uh, uh, the funding in, into the ecosystem because if they act as a customer, a recurring customer, it's annual recurring mm -hmm. revenue for the, for the, for the um, uh, scale ups and startups. And this attracts uh, more private capital through better valuations, et cetera. So it's it's a boost in the US, how, how the government is treating this. And here it's more like uh, slowly, Ab slowly Absolutely. Down, right? And I mean, so, yeah. I, I mean you, you see, when you look at the, uh, the micro launcher competition, which you mentioned before, yeah. uh, that, that we can also do that. Yeah. And the micro launcher competition was a huge success. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we have, we, we have uh, several uh, uh, micro launcher startups in Germany, which compete with each other. And with this competition, um, we um, we help these companies um, to 
to gain visibility. And the, uh, the, the companies with the, the best concepts, the two companies, the best and, uh, and uh, um, most uh, existing customers uh, won this competition. They got their first two launches paid for by the German government. So the German government acted as the first and anchor customer for these companies. Yeah. And the advantage for the government is they, uh, they now have two launches and they can use these your launches to launch their own government satellites into space. So they get value for money. It's not a subsidy or something like that. It's uh, they, they, they get really uh, something in exchange uh, for, uh, for giving 11 million euros, which is, again, if you look at the, uh, the, the, yeah. the global space budgets, kind of nothing. Uh, they get something in exchange. And it also helped the companies to get additional private money and private investors, because when they talk to VCs, uh, they, they could say, hey, we have the German government as anchor customer and they, all, they believe in us and they already bought two launches. Uh, so that, that's the best thing what happened. And if you look how much money uh, was uh, poured into, how much private money was poured into the uh, micro launcher companies after this competition started, it, it, it clearly um, uh, highlights how how th that is working and how successful it was. So, I mean, it was the first time you did this and now you see this venture capital, which was uh, going into either aerospace, uh, yeah. right, uh, rocket and We're talking so about on. more than 200 million uh, euros, which has been invested. So Absolutely. a 20x uh, return on investment of money, which is mainly spent in Germany, again, the yeah. resulting in uh, new taxes, which can be collected by, by the government. So it is a self uh, propelling it's a wheel. wheel. Exactly. It's win, a huge win. success. Yeah. But, but exactly. We should yes. replicate that. Exactly. Um, I mean, um, the, the space ecosystem has obviously a very important economic factor. And, and we covered a little bit how the government can uh, stimulate this uh, during the last couple of minutes. But it obviously space technology also is always a very kind of security aspect to it. Exactly. And we, ju we talked about uh, the um, sovereignty on the launchers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but do you also see that countries need more independence uh, on the satellite hardware? Um, so thinking really about the uh, entire systems? I think so, yes. Um, um, but at the end of the day, I think it's not only about hardware. The biggest part is, is about downstream applications. It's about software. And uh, at the end of the day, space and new space is about data. And, uh, and, and the hardware uh, is, I would say, it's kind of the enabler, yeah? And, and the launches and the rockets, they are super sexy, of course, but mm -hmm. they are only, yeah, uh, in marks, uh, the, the enablers. And the, 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 the main thing is happening uh, in space with the generation and collection of data and the, um, the, the, the new downstream uh, applications, which, which makes that possible. Yeah, and we, we need the hardware competence to have access uh, to the to the data, and I think we sh shouldn't make the the mistakes uh, as Europeans and the German we we made in the past when it comes to digitalization and new technologies. I think we we, we shouldn't make the mistakes again, which uh, in the past was that we um, uh, we neglected these issues. Uh, we uh, didn't invest enough. We, the government put in place a, a legal framework which was not very, let's say, growth and investor friendly. And we ended up in a situation where huge US tech companies, Google, Amazon, um, Facebook, uh, Alphabet, you name them, dominate uh, uh, the market. And I think uh, we are now in a process uh, we are at the beginning or in the middle of a process where we risk uh, that the history is repeating itself and yeah. uh, it will be American companies, tech companies again, who dominate this uh, uh, space ecosystem and who have the access to the ta to, 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 to data and uh, uh, then to the uh, new um, uh, business models. And I think... Um, 
again, we need to uh, we need to address that, and we we shouldn't make the uh, uh, mistakes we we made in the past again. Yeah. So what you're saying is that we really need a competency on the entire tech stack, so to really be able to have a sovereign ownership of everything from launch to having satellites in orbit, in orbit to having the capabilities to process the data. Correct. I would say yes. Um, we 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 need the expertise, uh, we need the companies, and we need uh, to be competitive um, on an international level. Uh, I'm I, I'm not saying that we, um, as Europeans or Germans, we should do everything uh, 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 only here and and, and totally uh, uh, on our own. Uh, 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 I think in a, in a globalized world, um, that's um, that's not the best approach. But again, we need the expertise, uh, we need the the equipment, and we we need to be competitive. Yeah, that's that what's what what it should be about. So yeah. we need to be competitive because um, uh, it's a it's a big future uh, industry which will drive the economy mm -hmm. or because of defense and intelligence reasons. Um, when you look what's going on in the US, and if you, and if you would ask the, 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 the American uh, partners and friends, they would, um, they would argue based on this security and national uh, defense uh, uh, aspect. So that, that would be their main argument. And uh, because they, they want to be leading in this regard, they in, invest in private companies, they give contracts to private companies, they generate competition, and as kind of a windfall profit, the entire ecosystem is benefiting from that. Uh, so the security and national sovereignty aspect clearly plays a very important role. And I think that uh, Europeans um, made themselves very dependent in this regard especially on 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 Russian partners and on, uh, on on Russian launch vehicles on Russian rockets like the the, the, the the Soyuz rocket so I think we we need to to emphasize the uh, national security and defense aspect much more but I also think we uh, need to to highlight the uh, importance for the entire economy uh, uh, even more yeah so uh, that that should also play play a role I, I i i wouldn't reduce space to security and defense yeah. but we should uh, increase the importance in uh, uh, in our dealings yeah so obviously i think that um space technology always has played at the inter intersection of pri uh, commercial use and, and and military and defense applications so it always has been du dual use that's the term mm -hmm. which is used in this kind of uh, area <clears throat> so obviously one of the technologies which is very much dual use is telecommunication and one of the hottest topics during the last kind of um decades uh, not not decade maybe five years in the space ecosystem has been settled by satellite based telecommunication and the most prominent kind of constellation which we currently have in orbit is Starlink from SpaceX and Elon Musk. Obviously, there are others such as OneWeb, which is partially owned by uh, the, the British government. Um, but Spacelink, uh, you posted, for example, earlier this year, uh, a post with the two Klitschko brothers mm -hmm. and a uh, delivery of, uh, of uh, Starlink uh, ground stations, uh, which we went through the roof on LinkedIn. Um, but obviously, telecommunication and communication from space is very important. Now, I mentioned again companies, OneWeb, um, Starlink, which are, have been started in the US, now are not in European hands, European, I mean EU. Um, how important do you think um, is it for the European Union to have its own satellite-based telecommunication system? I think it's very important. Um, it, it's, in, it's very important for various reasons. Uh, uh, reason number one, obviously, it's uh, secure connectivity. So we are again in the field of security and defense. Uh, and we, we see that at the moment what's going on in Ukraine, that Starlink really is a game changer for the um, Ukrainian armed forces. It enables them 
to communicate in real time uh, with the government, with other units, uh, exchange information, and that really gives them an edge on the battlefield. So uh, there is uh, there there is this security and defense dimension, and I think if we uh, want Europe to be more sovereign and to be more um, relevant when it comes to security and defense, um, we need a secure connectivity system. That's number one. Number two, um, secure connectivity and connectivity from space is uh, increasingly important for non-space technologies on Earth like autonomous driving, like IoT, like Industry 4.0. So um, I think we need uh, a European solution uh, for the non-space economy, uh, because otherwise our companies would need to purchase these services abroad, uh, by. Uh, purchase them from, from, from US tech companies. And then we would have exactly the same situation we already we are already in when it comes to digitalization, cloud computing, etc. And, and, and I really think we need uh, competition, global competition. And uh, the, uh, the prerequisite for competition is that we have a system, a European system, which, which uh, is uh, competitive. Uh, so to answer your question, we we need a European solution. The question is not, do we need it? The question is more, how do we set it up? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and I believe the uh, the current proposals by the European Union um, are going into the wrong direction. Can you explain a little bit what these are? Okay, uh, the, uh, the 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 European uh, Union uh, Commissioner Predon, the um, the head of the um, the industry uh, department um, and responsible for European uh, industrial policy. He wants to set up uh, a secure connectivity constellation, um, which is, let's say, done in a way like all European space projects have been done in the past. Meaning uh, the, the European Union together with ESA is specifying what they have, how they want it, uh, they, 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 they want to define all the specifications and uh, then they want to, um, let's say, companies building it after the plan uh, they, they, they defined. And this is, I think, um, and we, we've seen that in, 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 in other uh, European space projects, that. Th that that's the best way that it will get much more expensive, will uh, come much later, and at the end of the day, be be, be less competitive on the uh, on on the international level. So what what we are arguing for is a more uh, competitive approach, where the uh, the European Union should act as a customer, and there should be a fair uh, competition about best ideas, best solutions, um, where companies are asked, what can you bring in? What ideas do you have? And this should be done regardless the size and the, uh, uh, the, the heritage of the companies. So the American approach again. And unfortunately, it looks like that the European Union, uh, with the support of many European governments, especially the French government, is is going in a different uh, in a different direction. It's it's super interesting. I I, I had a flash in my mind now the, the past uh, um, ten minutes because actually if you think about this, they're doing the same mistake again. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen it also in other domains, for example, in, in cloud infrastructure like AWS. Then the European government wants to find a solution to create a competitor. It's impossible. It's so many billions. And now the flash in my mind was basically that through this um, uh, competition approach from NASA, contracting SpaceX for launches. They got big. They got money to actually build Starlink, which is now changing the game in the war in, in, in Europe and yeah. Ukraine. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it's also about these indirect connections, about the things you don't, uh, you don't think of right now, that we need a strong ecosystem in this, right? As the US and the Silicon Valley has a strong internet ecosystem, 
that's why all the cloud operators and all these big companies come from there. And I think with space, it's it's not not too late, right? Um, we've seen big changes in the past, so let's get this done. I would say. Mm. Yeah. So we are we are heavily working on that, and um, um, we we made very concrete proposals um, uh, for the. Um, uh, EU ministerial uh, or the ESA ministerial conference in November, where um, one of the um, let's say um, important decisions will be made about which direction we go when it comes to secure connectivity. Yeah. And what one thing which is really a bit shocking uh, at the moment is is that the German government <laughs> is not planning to participate. <laughs> in this program at all right. yeah because they say we don't have enough money we need to save money we have too many legacy projects which uh, uh, we need to continue to invest in so we don't have money for the uh, new secure connectivity uh, uh, constellation and, and program and that's 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 really incredible because if germany is not signing up to it uh, germany will not be able to shape uh, how the constellation will be set up, yeah. And if we, if you don't invest, uh, or if the German government is not investing, uh, it will have no influence uh, on uh, on on it, and uh, we will not be able to uh, promote a more competitive approach, which we really need. And without investing in it, um, uh, there will be no money which will be um, uh, delivered to German companies in form of contracts which will enable them yeah. to increase their uh, competence and their expertise and will help them uh, attract uh, additional private money and become uh, more more uh, competitive uh, for themselves. So that really uh, we really have a big issue here. And that's something we we, 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 we we very clearly address to the German government and uh, to, to, to ESA and the European uh, Union that really needs to change. And especially Germany as uh, biggest country and biggest economy within Europe needs to step up its engagement in, in, in this regard. Yeah, and we have seen just uh, last week what can happen if uh, communication is disrupted for infrastructure with Deutsche Bahn basically absolutely uh, just two cables and the entire train connections in, in northern Germany were cancelled broke because, down yeah, yeah they broke yeah, down yeah. right so another another good reason but it's very often these indirect connections and uh, the space ecosystem is very complex yeah. uh, it's very hard to to make these connections um, if, if you're in, in politics I think yeah. so you've mentioned that the right now the German government forms a new space strategy for the next 10 years or at least the last one was it was formed 10 years ago and now it's uh, it's time to, to have a new one what are your maybe top wishes uh, for the space strategy first of all I think uh, it, it's very good that we get a new space strategy and I think uh, Anna Christmann the uh, air and space coordinator is um, is really is really doing a great job uh, in, uh, in in this regard and um, by, by organizing this huge event last week where uh, all space and new space companies have been able to participate uh, um, and, 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 and make their, 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 their voice heard. Uh, that was very good and uh, uh, it, uh, it's a very, a very good and strong uh, a signal. Um, and, and when it comes to, to, to the details of the, uh, the strategy, um, I think we we need to understand that the the space economy and the importance of space uh, significantly changed uh, since the, uh, the 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 last strategy uh, was um, was was finalized. Uh, so we we really need a new perception when it comes to space. Space is not. Uh, uh, a minor topic for billionaires and space tourism and we are flying to Mars that that exists that, that, that is if you ask me I would say that, that, that's totally fine yeah but space is much more space is the uh, the prerequisite for climate protection for sustainability on earth for new non-space technologies so we really uh, 
that the new strategy must highlight that, uh, put uh, it must increase the importance for space and space policy for the entire government, and we need a, a government-wide approach. Yeah, at the moment, space is done by the Ministry of Economics. Yeah, colon, and and that's not enough. Yeah, because space affects all other departments and all other uh, departments and ministry need to acknowledge that yeah uh, for example we send our uh, new space proposals to the uh, agriculture minister because space is so important for smart farming and it really helps making agriculture more sustainable uh, and, and increase and increases the output yeah so yeah. Again, it needs to be a government-wide approach and the new strategy needs to, to take that into account. And it's not only about uh, the, 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 the government, it also needs to take into account that uh, the entire economy and especially the manufacturing sector depends on it. So it's a key or it should be a key uh, industrial topic uh, uh, as well, and, and and the last thing, I think, which um, which uh, which is important is, uh, and, and that's what we we talked about um, in, in the last thirty minutes a lot. Uh, it's about the system change. We need more competition. Uh, we need fair and equal access to and for all companies, regardless um, of their size and heritage. And the government and government. Uh, organizations should primarily act as customers, yeah, not as uh, specifiers and organizers, but as customers. And um, that's something the new uh, space strategy uh, needs to make happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, one of the um, key uh, technologies we need uh, basically to tackle climate change is Earth observation. Mm -hmm. um, do you also position that in your, in your, in your paper or uh, do you communicate also this to the government? Um, because I think if this is a major point in, in, the, in the reasoning and you can give so many different examples. Um, of course, all the climate modeling comes from, from data from, from or not all, but a lot comes from, from satellites. Uh, weather forecasts already today come from satellites, but also the damages on forests come from satellites and methane monitoring etc. come from satellites. So um, is this already well positioned there or do you think we could increase that? So that people understand we, we could, we yeah. could and we should increase it much more. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, 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 it's there. Everyone who is a bit into the topics knows that. Uh, but I think it's not yet fully under, understood mm. uh, um, in in the uh, in the society, and it's not yet fully understood. I would say by political decision makers as well. Mm. And I think we need to to address it so it could and should be uh, uh, addressed much more. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So shifting topics a little bit while we're coming to the end. So life here is more than 33 nationalities and without immigration, uh, we could not grow as fast as we do. So really, we, we are um, uh, really trying to get the best people from all over the globe. And Berlin obviously is a great, pool, great, great hub and is attracting a lot of um, people. This is awesome for us. But we don't really get a lot of applications from experts from Germany. Um, uh, is the BDI in the end working on in initiatives to get more people already in school and university excited about space? I would say yes. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, talent is absolutely crucial. And uh, if you don't have the right people, um, everything else is, is, is not going to work, is not going to fly. Um, so I think in, in general we need to put more emphasis on the opportunities of technical uh, uh, um, uh, uh, jobs and uh, uh, technical uh, expertise. And um, I think, for example, that astronauts uh, really, really help us in this regard. 100%. Yeah, I, um, um, I, I have kids and, and they know uh, Matthias Maurer, they, um, they know all the, the other astronauts and they are super excited uh, about it. Yeah? And they say, hey, uh, 
what do you what do you need to do what do i need to learn what do i need to study in the future to to have this kind of opportunities and uh, so 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 space really uh uh on, on the one side you, you need the right people with the right let's say technical expertise and background and education uh, but space also uh, can can help to excite people to exactly go into these fields and and do it and study and um, and, and make it uh, make it your profession so i think it's uh, it's working in, uh, in in both directions and again at the end of the day it's all about talent we need to invest more in our people we need to excite more our people the younger generation but i also think that we should be more open to talent from abroad Uh, if they want to come here and participate and uh, make a living here and contribute, I think we should be much more open uh, to, to 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 this than we are at the moment. Yeah, I think that are perfect closing words. Uh, so, uh, Matthias, uh, thank you very much um, for joining us today, uh, also here in, in person in, in our office in Berlin. Um, also, thanks everybody for tuning in um, and uh, being our listeners uh, for this episode. Um, so make sure you tune in next time and follow um, News Based Vision on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, I think we also on TikTok now um, for updates, announcements and more about um, uh, space. Um, yeah, I hope we will see you next time. And it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Stop.